purihin ng Diyos. Haleluya, isang mapagpalang umaga sa bawat isa. Salamat sa Diyos sa araw na ito. Amen. And also good morning din sa ating brothers and sisters online. Naway patuloy ang pagpapalat biyaya ng Panginoon sa inyo po mga kapatid at uh, sa araw na ito. Isang uh, biyaya at opportunity na pinagkalob sa atin upang patuloy tayo magbigay ng kapurihan sa ating Diyos na buhay sa patuloy na pag-iingat sa bawat isa sa atin. Salamat din sa Diyos na itawid natin yung kalahati ng 2024 itong buong June sa biyaya ng Panginoon. Amen. Kaya ang lahat ay dapat ibigay sa Panginoon sa lahat ng bagay na pinapadama niya sa atin ano man ang kinakaharap ng bawat isa isipin natin na ang Diyos ay palagi natin kasama at handang dominig ng mga panalangin higit sa lahat sa mga may pusong mababa at handang magbigay kapurihan sa Panginoon Our scripture for today from the book of Psalms chapter 34 verse 15 onward The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears toward their cry The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the memory of them from the earth When the righteous cry for help The Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the cross in spirit. May the Lord add His blessings for the reading of His Word. Please rise, brothers and sisters. Kung sino po sa bawat isa na mayroon pong uh, nais nice na itaas sa panalangin sa umagang ito, Tayo po'y malayang mananalangin. Alalahanin natin sa, sa Book of Acts na may mga kapatid doon na nakulong at maningas na nalangin ang iglesia at may ginawa ang Panginoon. Sa panahon natin ngayon, tayo po ay may kalayaan din. Ang purpose ang ating ipinagparito upang tayo sama-sama na idulog sa Panginoon anuman ang ating kahilingan. Mga kapatid, Uri ng Diyos sa magang ito at kung sino man ang mayroong panalangin na ating itataas sa magang ito. Mga kapatid natin, mga anak natin na nasa malayong lugar, isama natin sa panalangin. Mga kapatid natin na mayroong mga iba't ibang pinagdaraanan, isama natin sa panalangin sa magang ito. Amen. Sino pa po mga kapatid? We pray, Abby, na nasa malayo. Si Chrisel. Tayo na mga kapatid. O aming Diyos na dakilag banal, ang aming Diyos na punong-puno ng pag-ibig, ang Diyos na lumikha ng lahat ng bagay, Ang lahat ng aming nakikita ay kayo po ang may likha. Ang Diyos ng mga ninuno, ni Abraham, Isaac at ni Jacob. Ang Diyos na gumagawa ng Himala noon at Diyos tinamin sa panahon na ito. Ang Diyos at Ama ng aming Panginoong, Kristo Yesus. Muli Panginoon, tanggapin niyo po ang aming taus-pusong pasasalamat sapagkat karapat dapat kayo, sapagkat Kayo ay Diyos na nasa lahat ng dako. Ang Diyos na nakasaliksik ng puso ng bawat isa. Karapat dapat kayo tumanggap ng lahat ng papuri, pagkilala, sapagkat sa inyo po ang lahat ng kadakilaan, ang lahat ng kalawalatian. Ang Diyos at Ama ng aming Panginoong Kristo Yesus, Panginoon, salamat po. Muli kami nagpapakumbaba 
at patuloy na nagpapalinis ng aming mga puso. Patawarin niyo po kami, Panginoon. Paging dapat inyo nawa kami, Panginoon, sa lahat ng kabutihan na pinadama po ninyo sa bawat isa sa amin. Salamat po sa patuloy na buhay na ito, patuloy na kalakasan at pag-asa, Panginoon namin Diyos. Sa magang ito, Panginoon, pinagkakatiwala po namin sa inyo ang aming pagtitipon. Alam namin, Panginoon, narito po kayo sa aming kalagitnan. Nararamdaman po namin, Panginoon, ang iyong presensya. E binubukas po namin ang aming mga puso. Pagharihan niya nawa ang aming mga buhay, Panginoon namin, Diyos. At sinasantabi namin ang Panginoon ang anumang bagay na umahad lang sa paglapit namin sa inyo sa umagang ito. Panginoon namin, Diyos, na makapangyarihan sa lahat. Dalangin namin, Panginoon, ang forthcoming convention sa Norway. Panginoon, muli kayong mangusap sa mga kapatiran na naroon sa pamagitan ni Brother Stroman. Patuloy niyo po siya ang bigyan ng lakas. Ang kanyang kalusugan ay pan patuloy niyo ang panumbalikin. At patuloy niyo po siyang gamitin, Panginoon namin, Diyos. Hallelujah. Maging ang mga kapatiran na naroon na naging saksi, Panginoon, sa ginawan po ninyo sa buhay ng aming kapatid. Patuloy niyo po silang pagpalain doon o aming Diyos na dakila at banal. Salamat po, salamat po, Panginoon. Kami rito, dalangin namin, Panginoon, ang mga kapatiran na nasa malayo. Ang anak ni Brother Eric, Sister Guy na si Abi na nasa malayo. Ano man ang kanyang kinakaharap sa mga sandaling ito, mahabag po kayo, Panginoon. Alang-alang sa kanyang mga magulang na narito upang maibsan man ang kanilang kinakaharap na sa loobin. Habag po, Panginoon, ang aming hinihiling Patuloy niyo po ang alalahanin ng aming kapatid. Nakita niyo po, Panginoon, ang kanyang paglakad noong panahong sa inarito. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Bless your name. Bless your name. And we believe, Lord. We blame, Lord. In Jesus' name. Lang hindi namin si Crisel, Panginoon namin, Diyos. Ano man ang kanyang kalagayan, kinakarap sa masandaling ito, Panginoon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Gorospa family. Sister Julie. Sister Anita. Sister Harriet. At iba pang mga kapatid, Panginoon, na nangangailangan ng kalakasang pisikal. Ay patuloy namin tinadalangin. Pagalakan na namin ang sila'y maitaas, Panginoon, sa iyong banalaluklukan sa pamagitan ng mga panalangin. Mahabag po kayo, Panginoon namin Diyos. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Dalahin ko rin, Panginoon, yung mga anak na narito, na humihiling, Panginoon, ng mga bagay na nagmumula sa inyo. Kayo lamang, Panginoon, na may kapangyamriha magbigay ng binis sa napupunan ng bawat isa sapagkat isang kadustahan sa isang babae, Panginoon, ang hindi magkaroon ng supling. Ang aming mga anak, 
na narito ay hayag po sa inyo, Panginoon. Lord, mahabag po kayo. Panalang lamang ang tangi namin maibibigay sa kanila, Panginoon. Kayo po nakababatid ng puso ng bawat isa. Maging aking mga anak, kapo na nasa malayo, ay patuloy namin itinadalangin. Panginoon namin, Diyos, kanino kami tatawag? Kayo ay Diyos noon at Diyos din namin ngayon. Sinasamba namin kayo, Panginoon, sa magang ito. Malugod na hawa kayo, Panginoon, kasi yan niyo pong bawat bahagi ng aming pagtitipon. Ang mga papurit pagsambang awit namin iaandog sa magang ito, kalugdan niyo na hawa, Panginoon. Maging ang mensahe pagkakaloob ng iyong lingkod, yan o, hindi po, Panginoon, patuloy na ito magbigay ng kalakasan sa bawat isa sa amin. Salamat po, Panginoon namin, Diyos, na makapangyarihan sa lahat. Ang bawat isang kaluluwa na narito sa iyong kampamento, dawa Panginoon, ang lahat ay lalabas sa lugar na ito na taglay ang biyayang magpupula, magmumula sa inyo. Pagpapalang espiritual. Patuloy niyo po kami bigyan ng lakas upang ma-over ka mga anumang bagay na hamon ng buhay. Salamat po. Salamat, Panginoon. Hallelujah! We worship you, Lord, today. We honor you, Lord. Yes, Lord. We lift up your name, O Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Salamat po, aming Diyos. Muli, tanggapin niyo po ang aming taos-pusong pagbabalik pa po. Pagtakila at pasasalamat. Alam po namin ang aming mga panalangin ay naipamagitan yes. ng iyong anak na si Kristo Isus na aming Panginoon at takilang tagapagligtas. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen, Church. Good morning. Can we all say Amen? amen. Hallelujah. Well, I hope that you could already feel God's presence in this place today he is here amen for the Bible says that whether two or three are gathered in his name he is there in the midst of them amen church can we all shout the name Jesus can we shout Jesus hallelujah we give God the big clap of praise you know may our struggles and may our problems in life make us make us desire to worship God more amen let our problems make us desire to praise and worship God more amen in your time of grief in your time of sorrow you praise and worship God in your time of rejoicing in times of success we praise God so in every aspect of our life wala po tayong gagawin kundi magpuri at magpasalamat at Ibigay yung nararapat sa ating Panginoon. Amen. 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 So are we all ready? To... Ready na po ba ang bawat worshipers ng TJC? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray na lahat tayo kakanta. Lahat tayo papalakpak. O lahat tayo walang tikom ang bibig. Amen. 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 Pwede ba yun? Nakikita ko kayo. <laughs> Above all, nakikita tayo ni Lord. Hallelujah. Let's just take this opportunity to praise Him and thank Him for all that He has done. Come all you weary, come and find His yoke is easy, His burden light, and He is able At the table of the Lord. One more time. Come on, you weary. Come and find his yoke is easy, his burden light, and he is able. He will restore. 
table of the Lord. Come on, let's clap our hands to God this morning. God, we welcome you in this place. Inaanyayahan namin ang inyong banal na presensya, Panginoon. Come on, whistle. And I will feast at the table of the Lord. I will feast at the table of the Lord. And I won't hunger anymore. Come on. At His table. I will feast at the table of the Lord. Come on, DJC. I will feast at the table of the Lord. Oh, we worship you, God. I won't hunger anymore at His table. Come on, you. the 
Welcome you, Lord. Blessed be your name.
Come on, church. We're singing that one more time. And your grace is enough. Come on. We sing that louder. Your grace is enough for me. For me. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Naniniwala po ba kayo This is more than just a song. What we sing. Dahil totoo po na ang biyaya ng ating Diyos ay sapat. It is more than enough. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Palapakan natin ang ating Lord. And we're serving a God who breaks every chain. Amen. You've been walking the same old road for miles and miles You've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies If you're trying to feel the same old holes inside There's a better life There's a better life Let's sing it from the top If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles You've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies And if you're trying to feel the same old holes inside There's a better life There's a better life If you've got pain He's a pain taker Come on to JC If you feel lost He's a way Search for the light of day and the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. We've all run to things we know just ain't right. And there's a better life, yes, Lord. There's a better life. Come on, together. If you've got pain, it's a pain taker.
Is worthy to be praised, Lord. You are, you are a God who makes a way where there seems to be no way, Panginoon. And that is why, Lord, today, nais namin itaas at patuloy na anyayahan ang inyong banal na presensya, Panginoon, habang kasalukuyan ka namin pinupuri, Panginoon. Lord, when we sing this song, 
when we continue to worship Lord we remember those who are in need of your healing who are in need of your rescue who are in need of your encouragement of your strength Panginoon Lord may your hands be upon them Panginoon Hallelujah you are worthy to be praised Amen He is worthy of our praise Amen Hallelujah Lord
Amen, church. That is already enough for us to say and to continue to sing and shout and praise God. Amen. That is more than an assurance that with confidence our God listens, our God hears, our God sees everything. Lord, salamat Panginoon Diyos. Purihin ka, Panginoon Diyos. I worship you. 
on, church. Come on. I am Father, we give you thanks and we give you glory in this place today. Patuloy namin itinataas ang iyong dakilang pangalan, Panginoon. Thank you, O God, dahil whenever we have and whenever we need to feel you, you are always there. Hindi mo kami binibigo. Hindi mo binibigo, Panginoon, ang bawat nasa, ang bawat expectation ng bawat kaluluwa na nandito, Panginoon, na pumupunta, Panginoon Diyos, sa inyong bahay sa bahay. Lord, we ask, O oh God, may you continue to move in this place today. Patuloy mong pagpalayan ng bawat isa. God, those that are here for the first time in many years, our prayers that may you continue to work in their lives, Lord. And to those that we don't come to fellowship with for a long, long time, we pray for them as well. And we remember them, Panginoon. Lord, itong aming church online, maging tool, Panginoon Diyos, para makareceive sa mga matagal nang hindi nakakadalo, Panginoon, sa sambahang ito, Panginoon. Lord, let your presence, O God, be with them. As they continue to hear us singing and worshiping and praising you, Lord. Lord, sa oras na ito, patuloy ka namin pinupuri at pinasasalamatan, Panginoon. Dahil, O oh God, as we worship you, naniniwala kami, Panginoon, that all the unanswered prayers are now being answered, Lord. And we believe everything by faith. Lord, hindi ka namin inuutusan, Panginoon, nasagutin lahat, but we believe, O oh Lord, that You are a God who is capable of doing exceedingly great things, O oh God. You are a God who makes a way, tulad ng kinakanta namin, Panginoon. Kahit hindi ka namin nakikita, Panginoon, gumagawa ka sa aming harapan, Panginoon. Kahit minsan hindi ka namin maramdaman, You are still working, O oh God. Dahil yun ka, That is who you are, Lord. You are a God, Lord, who always makes a way, Lord. Salamat, Panginoon, sa oras na ito. May you continue to anoint this service, our preacher who will deliver your word. May those words that's going to be uttered today fall not into deaf ears, but may it fall, O God, into prayerful hearts, Lord. And ma-receive namin lahat ng ito wholeheartedly at lalabas kami ulit mamaya na may galak na bitbit sa aming mga puso, Panginoon Diyos. Handa kaming harapin, Panginoon, ang araw ng bukas for a fresh start of the week again. We honor you. We give you all the glory and praise. 
we seal and dedicate our worship service in Jesus' name. Amen, Lord. Amen, Lord. Hallelujah. What a presence of the Lord. Amen. I would like to greet you all in the name of the Lord. A pleasant good morning, everyone. And I hope that you had a good night rest. Did you? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. It is always good. And you wake up feeling better. Amen. So I'm thankful to God for this wonderful opportunity again na binigay sa atin ng Diyos na tayo po ay samasamang nandito. It's always a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. There is just nothing like it. Amen. Salamat din sa mga prayers ninyo. I am a little bit surprised that my voice is still alive after two grueling weeks of uh, Bible exposition. We consume at least five hours a day, the most. And hindi ko binibigla yung mga estudyante dahil baka ma-overload sila. Sumasakit din yung ulo nila. <laughs> to process what is being uh, taught. So I am taking my time. Uh, we spend like one hour from 9 to 10 and then take a break for like 30 minutes. Binibigyan ko sila ng chance na mag-coffee para meron silang time na i-process yung kanilang napapakinggan. And I'm pretty sure that they are enjoying themselves. Yes, last Sunday we dealt with pride. And uh, I believe all of us struggles with pride. Wala ni isa sa atin ng excuse. Tayo po lahat ay nahuhulog sa kahinaan ng pride. And the antithesis to that attitude is humility. At yan po ang ating pag-uusapan ngayong umaga. 
humility or humbleness, which is sometimes being misconstrued as weakness. Others think that when you humble yourself, you are weak, you are a coward. If you turn the other cheek when you are smitten or uh, accused of or whatever things that's being thrown at you and you just accept it, you just humble yourself. Nowadays, it is a, a rarity, yung attitude na yan ng humility. So turn with me in Micah chapter 6 verse 8. It's just my first text for this morning. Micah chapter 6, verse 8. May I request everyone to please rise. Let us all stand. As we read the verse. And he, he have shewed thee, O man. Micah 6, 8. What is good and what doth the Lord require of thee? But to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly before thy God or with thy God. Panginoon, kami po ay nagpapasalamat sa iyo sa umagang ito. Salamat po sa pag-iingat mo sa bawat isa na kami po ay nakaparito. Salamat po sa bagong umaga, bagong buhay, bagong lakas, bagong pag-asa na ipinagkakaloob po ninyo sa amin. Salamat po sa iyong masaganang biyaya na amin pong patuloy na nararanasan at natitikman sa aming buhay. Sa umagang ito, O Diyos, kasangkapanin po ninyo ang inyong maliit na lingkod at nawa sa kanyang mga labi ay mamutawi ang mga salitang magbibigay po ng Unawa sa amin kung paano ang kalugod-lugod na paglakad sa iyong harapan at magbigay liwanag sa amin o Diyos upang magawa naming salaminin ang aming sarili kung ano po kami sa iyong harapan, Panginoon, at patuloy na pagsikapan na kami po ay makalakad ng kaaya-ayang lakad, Panginoon, sa harapan po ninyo. Sa iyo mapagpalang kamay, amin pong ipinagtatagubilin ang gawain na ito at umaasa na patuloy po kayong mangungusap sa amin sa pamamagitan ng iyong salita. Salamat po sa iyo ang papurit kaluwalatian sa tanging pangalan ni Kristo Jesus na aming dakilang tagapagligtas. Amen. You may be seated, Church. Uh, Last Sunday, if you recall, the last person that we talked about was an emperor whose name was Nebuchadnezzar and how the Lord taught him uh, to be humble because he started becoming proud in his heart. Tinuruan siya ng Panginoon and the Lord uh, removed his sanity and he lived like a wild beast for seven seasons or like seven years. And after seven seasons, his sanity came back to him. And he recognized that God is able to enthrone and dethrone. He can raise up and he can remove. And all that power rests upon him. Uh, yung binasa nating talata is a reminder what God requires from us that is to do justice, love, have mercy, and to walk humbly before our God. In the Gospel of St. Mark, there is a, a narrative, a situation, a condition and the Lord used the petition and the request of the two apostles to teach humility. Let us read in Mark chapter 10. In Mark chapter 10, let's begin reading in verse 35. 
the two disciples or the two apostles, namely James and John. Okay, in Mark chapter 10, verse 35. Let's begin reading there. And James and John, sons of Zebedee, come unto him, saying, Master, we would that thou shouldest do for us whatsoever we shall desire. So they were a little bit confident. Sila po ay may kumpiyansa. At meron silang uh, lakas ng loob na utusan ng Panginoon na gawin ang ninanais nila at ang kanilang gustong kahilingan para sa Panginoon at para sa kanila. Pinagbigyan sila ng Panginoong Yesus by saying, What is it that you want me to do for you? And he said unto them, What would you that I should do for you? What is it? What is it that you desire from me? Ano yung gusto niyo sa akin? And the request is, Who will sit on his right hand and on his left? 37, they said unto him, Grant unto us. They have the audacity to say that. They said unto him, Grant unto us that we may sit one on thy right hand and the other on thy left in thy glory. So Lord, pag ikaw ay nandoon na sa iyong kaluwalatian, uupo kami sa iyong kanan at kaliwa. No, yung magkapatid na ito. They were asking the Lord, pagka umupo ka na sa iyong throne of your glory, kami ni John, no, uupo sa kanan mo at sa iyong kaliwa. And then the Lord replied and asked them, again, they have the audacity to say, yes, we can. But Jesus said unto him, you know not what you ask, guys. You don't know what you're asking. Hindi nyo alam kung ano yung inihingi ninyo. No? So the disciples are busy thinking about position. Thinking about being recognized, jockeying for position. That is what's on their mind. Brothers and sisters, no? Yung kanilang pagnanais na makilala, ma-recognize. At yun ang kanilang malakas na loob na hiningi na gawin ng ating Panginoon para sa kanila. But the Lord said, you actually don't know what you're asking. You don't actually know what you're talking about. Can you drink of the cup that I drink of? Kaya ba ninyong inumin? Ang kopa na iniinom ko? And be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? Ano yung ibig sabihin ng Panginoon? Na iniinom kong cup at bautismo na ako'y binabautismohan na sinasabi niya, kayo niyo yan? He is actually talking about the suffering that he will taste. Yung mga pag-uusig and eventually ending up into him being crucified. Tinanong ng Panginoon, kaya ninyo? Kaya ba ninyo? No? And they said again <laughs> with confidence and they said unto him, we can. Wow. Talaga. Okay. And they said they're so confident to themselves na yung suffering na iinumin ng Panginoon at ang kamatayan na titikman ng Panginoon that they are able to overcome and partake of it. And they said unto him, We can! <laughs> and Jesus agreed with them, Definitely you will. So Jesus, early on, is already predicting that none of the disciples with John exempted will all die. The only apostle who died a natural death 
was John the Beloved. Actually, si John ay inilagay sa kumukulong langis. He did not die. So of all the apostles, he was the only one who died a natural death. So dito po sa binasa natin, when the Lord asked, can you drink of the cup? Meaning, are you able to endure the sufferings that I will go through? And they were confident, responding the query of the Lord. Yes, we can. And the Lord agreed, yes, you will. <laughs> ha? Talagang titikman ninyo. Ha? Magsasuffer kayo sa pagsunod ninyo sa akin. Parang nung tinawag si Paul, mga kabatid ng Panginoon, sabi ng Panginoon kay Ananias na nagpray over kay Paul, I will let him know how much he will suffer for my name's sake. Verse 39, You shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of, and with the baptism that I am baptized with you, with all shall you be baptized. All right? The Lord said, yes, definitely you will suffer. Now, verse 40, Jesus being filled with the Godhead admitted His limitation. He accepted His boundaries. Okay? Tinanggap ng Panginoon na may limitation ang pwede niyang gawin. Because in verse 40, He said, but to sit, On my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give. Who is the sole authority to put people in charge? That's God alone. That authority rests in God alone. To install whoever He wants to install and to allow whoever He wants to allow it to sit on the throne of authority. But to sit on my right hand and my left hand is not mine to give. But it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared. So ang may tanging karapatan lang na magbigay niyan ang wika ng Panginoon is not me. He was actually referring to the Father. At ibibigay yon kung kanino yon nakadistino. Meaning, it's almost like Jesus is telling them, you don't even have to ask for it. It will be given to you accordingly. And when the ten heard about it, they were dismayed. It's, like, it's almost like saying, guys, what in the world are you doing? Why do you even have to ask the master about position? Huh? Verse 41. And when the ten heard it, they began to be much displeased <laughs> with James and John. Nalungkot sila. They were, they were irritated. They were like, my God, these two guys. Huh? What are you doing? 42. Now, the lesson of humility. But Jesus said, but Jesus called them to him. And he said unto them, You know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. Ang gustong sabihin ng Panginoon dito, ang mga hindi mananampalataya, they enjoy power. They enjoy ruling. They enjoy sitting in, on the seat of authority. They would like to present themselves as somebody. That's the way of the Gentiles. And their great ones exercise authority upon them. Look at the politicians. Hindi pa tapos ang six years. Now people are already thinking about the next election. See, why? Kung merong addict sa ipinagbabawal ng gamot, politicians are addicted to power. And that's what the Lord is saying. These guys, that's all they care about. They enjoy to sit on the seat of authority. But the antithesis, 
Okay? Is this. 43. But so shall it not be among you. What is he saying? Don't copy the ways of the Gentiles. You're going to be different. Okay? Don't do that. Don't desire for authority. Don't desire for power. Don't desire to be somebody. But whosoever will be great among you shall be your minister or servant. And whosoever of you will be chief, chiefest shall be servant of all. Would you like to be great? Would you like to be on top? Then learn to serve. And the Lord used himself as an example for even the Son of Man. I, your Lord, I did not come to be served, but to serve. And I give my life as a ransom for many. So ginamit ni Kristo ang kanyang sarili para sabihin sa mga disciples, mga kabatid, kung ako ang inyong Panginoon, naparito ako, hindi para inyong pagsilbihan, kung hindi magsilbi, at ibinibigay ko ang aking buhay bilang kabayaran para sa kasalanan ng marami. We are living in a world today, it is a struggle to be humble. It is a battle to stay humble. The more you climb into the ladder of success, the danger you become of being prideful. The more you climb in the ladder of prosperity, success, the more that the devil will tempt you, the more that you are on a cliff hunger of danger to fall into the snare of pride if you will not watch yourself. Because the Bible says in James, God resists the proud. God has no, has no fellowship with proud people. He rejects the attitude of pride. He abhors it. It's an abomination before the Lord. It is a character that is abhorrent before the Lord. He does not want to fellowship. That's why the word is so strong. He resists the proud. He doesn't listen to the petitions and requests of proud people. And the antithesis is, but giveth grace. To the humble. So the opposite of pride is humility. Brothers and sisters, and Jesus gave an example of himself. Turn with me in John 13. If we are following the footsteps of the master, then we should acquaint ourselves on the exampleship of our master, of our Lord. He is our master and yet he exemplified a servant leadership. Ang sabi po dito sa John 13, let's begin reading in verse 14. No, 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 no. Uh, <clears throat> verse 5. Oh, let's begin reading in verse 4. This is when the Lord washed the disciples' the disciples' feet. He riseth from supper and laid aside his garment and took a towel and girded himself, using it like an apron. After that, he put water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. So he nugasan ni Cristo ang mga paan ng mga apostol. Then Peter then he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said, Lord, don't wash my feet. And Jesus said, What I do knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Pedro, yung gagawin ko sa iyo ngayon, maring hindi mo maintindihan, but you will know after this why I do this. O 
Kay maaring sa kay, 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 kay Pedro, he, he count himself unworthy. Bakit ako hugasan ng uh, ang aking paa ng, 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 ng Messiah, ng anointed one? Am I worthy? That's the reason why Peter doesn't want the Lord to wash his feet. For him, he is unworthy. Sabi ng Panginoon, hayaan mo, maaring hindi mo ito ngayon maintindihan, but you will learn eventually. You will understand eventually. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. <laughs> Lord, kailanman hindi mo dapat hugasan ang aking mga paa. Pero ang sabi ni Kristo, kung hindi mo ako papayag ang hugasan ng paa mo, you have no part of me. <laughs> That's a very strong statement. If you, will, if, if you will forbid me to wash your feet, you have no part of me. <laughs> And that really was an eye-opener to Peter. I, he doesn't want to be separated from the Lord. And Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said unto him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but isn't, is clean every whit. And you are clean, but not all. All right? Uh, let's jump to verse 13. You call me Master and Lord, and you say, Well, for so I, I am. If I then, kung ako na inyong Panginoon, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. Amen? So Jesus displayed how it is to rule. Not the way the Gentiles rule. Merong isang panahon na sinabi ni Kristo sa mga apostol, huwag ninyong tularan niyang mga pareseyo na yan na paimbabaw. Gusto nilang lagi silang pinapansin. Pag sila manalangin, gusto nila nakikita ng mga tao. Pag sila lumakad, gusto nila ay talaga nakik- pati damit nila ang sabi ng Panginoon. At gusto nilang umupo sa upuan ni Moses. Alam niyo kung ano yung upuan ni Moses is the seat of authority. They like to control the people. Pag sila nagbibigay ng, ng, ng abuloy, they want everybody to see because they want praises. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, let not your righteousness be seen or what it is that you do good be seen by other people. Like, if you give, do it in secret. Don't blast it like a sounding trumpet. That's what the Lord said. Brothers and sisters, hallelujah. Meaning to say, when we become a child of God, we are being schooled in God's school of brokenness. Many will enroll in this school, but I don't know how many will graduate from this school. Because God will definitely break you no matter what. Before He will allow you to sit on the throne of that authority, He will break you first. If you are a child of God, you have no choice. You cannot resist the power of God. When I was in Kabadbaran, I preached about the foundation stone. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, The stone that the builders built became the cornerstone. Whoever falls on this stone, it will break him to pieces. But whosoever falleth or whosoever this stone falls upon, it will grind him. Two effects of the stone. Si Kristo yung bato, pero may dalawang epekto yung bato. Magpatihulog ka o ito ang mahulog sa'yo? Pag ito ang nahulog sa'yo, that's judgment. Pero kung ikaw ang magpatihulog, mga kapatid, it will break you, but it will not really break you to a point of condemnation. It will break you, it will break your pride, it will break your ego, it will break your old man, it will break every fiber of your past. Because God cannot make a new man out of you if you will not be broken. The only way God can create a new individual from you or a new man in you is He will have to break you first. 
Before David became a king, God break him. By what? When David fought Goliath, David has no ambition of becoming somebody. But after he defeated Goliath, he became a household name. He became popular. And that started the jealousy in the heart of Saul. Eventually, he became a part of Saul's army, killing thousands. When he entered the city, the women started saying, Oh, Saul killed hundreds. But David, thousands and thousands. And that sunk in into the heart of the king. He became so jealous. He became so deranged. He became a different guy. He became paranoid. Now at the end of the table sits a man that is a threat to his throne. So while they were dining, he took a spear and threw it at David. Good enough, he was able to judge, dodge the spear. Many times, Saul tried to kill David. From his anointment and him being installed as a king, you know how many years was the gap? Fifteen long years. He was a young man. He was actually a boy. When Samuel came to their house and asked Jesse, his dad, how many sons do you have? And Jesse paraded the sons, left out David because he was out there in the field tending his father's flock. He was so ashamed to call David because he was just a young lad. He thought that David is not worthy. He was just a boy. But when, 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 when he was summoned, because Samuel said, are these all your sons? Well, there's another one out there in the field. So he was summoned. So when David came, the voice of the Lord spoke to Samuel and said, that's my anointed. Maybe Samuel was a little bit reluctant to pour out the anointing oil because here comes a young lad. He's now in his, in his mind probably was comparing Saul was six foot something. And now God is anointing a boy. So David, an innocent boy, allowed the prophet to pour out the anointing oil. After that, he went back to his job as a, a shepherd. It did not get into his head. And then eventually that changes the life of David, brothers and sisters. He defeated Goliath, became part of Saul's army, and then the king tried to kill him. So the man was on the run. David was on the run. Where did he go? Caves. His dwelling place was a cave. Mountains. Imagine that. The future king of Israel dwelt in caves. Are you with me? In your life, there will be a soul in your life. God will use someone to hate you, to break you, to destroy you. You cannot escape it, no matter what you do. No matter how good of a person you are, there will always be someone that will not like you and will hate you to test your character. So where did David find himself? In caves. So you want to rule with Christ for a thousand years? Are you ready to dwell in caves first? Or are we so eager to sit on the throne of Glory, like James and John, Lord, we want to sit. When you sit on your throne of glory on the right and on the left, jockeying for position. That's what consumed their mind. And what did David do? Because this world is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. 
Did Saul leave him and said, oh, forget about him, he's on the run. It's like a fugitive, an outlaw. No, Saul chased him. And you know where David find himself? Brothers and sisters, in Gath. Where is that? Where Goliath came from. Now, David is in the enemy's camp. My God, it is like Bin Laden going into the FBI headquarters. Amen? And what did David do? You know what he did? He let his saliva drip into his beard. And he, he played like a crazy guy. That's in your Bible. To do what? To survive. To survive. <laughs> Here is a king on the run, living in caves, so chasing him. Brothers and sisters, and there was even a time that he needs to eat the bread only for the priest. But because he was a hunger, brothers and sisters, the priest gave him the bread. And that's what Jesus quoted also in one of his arguments with the Pharisees. They were so, uh, what you call this? Uh, particular with the law. So David went to Gath. Saliva dripping to his beard. Playing like a fool. And you know what the king said? Is there not enough crazy guy in my kingdom that you bring me another nuts? I have already so many crazy people in my kingdom. And here comes another one. David. Amen. And they, in David's distress, he came up with a song. Wow, a beautiful song. He said, Lord, day and night, my enemy chased me and I am in distress. My pillow is being watered with my tears. Father, defend me. And be the one to fight the battle for me. For mine enemies rest not day and night until they kill me. Only after a few days, David heard Jonathan, his friend, and King Saul was killed. Oh, that really broke David's heart. But there was even an instant or instance, that David could have killed the king. Have you read that in your Bible? Because the guard of the king fell asleep, and David sneaked in one night and cut one of his garment, and then hollered at daybreak saying, My father, my father, a piece of thy garment. Thy soldiers, thy guards, fell asleep. I could have killed you, you know. But I did not, for how can I touch the Lord's anointed? And Saul said, my son, you are more righteous than I am. But did that stop Saul? No. He kept chasing on David. Because he was so paranoid, he was so mad at him, he won't stop until he get rid of David. So that was the end of it. Brothers and sisters, are you with me? Amen? Hallelujah. In your life, there will be a soul. There will be caves. There will be time that you will almost fighting between sanity and insanity. God is going to bring you to the brink. None of us can escape it. 
regardless of your financial condition, you will reach that brink. That shadow of death will follow you, scare you. It will haunt you. It will give you sleepless nights. And if by chance it will even rob you of your joy, none of the believers are exempted of that experience. Why? Because God will have to break all of us. Until he is, brothers and sisters, sees that character that he is able to form in you. That attitude of humility. Praise the Lord. Amen. None of us. You have money now? Well, God can use sickness. To humble you down. Pain and trials are messages from the Lord. Do not neglect to read those messages. God may not speak to you directly now. No, he, he can speak through me. He can speak through the word. But he can also speak through circumstances that's going on in your life. And don't you ever misread it. Have a clear-cut understanding. Be able to understand the messages that's being covered and that's behind the circumstances that's now happening in your life or in our lives for that matter. Because those are warning signal from the Almighty God. He is telling you something, my brothers and sisters. So it is fitting, it is always wise to always check on our attitude. Praise the Lord. How is my attitude? Am I beginning to be prideful or humble? God is going to break us, no matter who you are. And humility starts and begins in self-denial. Turn with me in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 9. Brothers and sisters, Luke 9. Hallelujah. In Luke, chapter 9, We'll read in verse 23. Praise the Lord. Luke 9, 23. And he said to them, All, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. My friend, if you are still alive and you are not yet dead to the world, you are not yet dead to yourself. I tell you, it's going to be a struggle. If it is I, me, and myself, it is utterly impossible for all of us to be pleasing in the eyes of the Lord. Conflict will never be solved. Issues will never be solved. Why? Because it takes humility to say, I am sorry. You may think, I will wait for that person to approach me. Because he was the one who wounded me. He should be the one to apologize. Then, even if you were wounded by that person, that attitude tells me you also have pride. Are you with me? Huh? Pride is a stumbling block for issues to be resolved because nobody wants to admit 
And even sometimes you, it was not you who was the guilty party, but because you want to preserve the relationship. The fellowship is more important than who's right and who's wrong. Then you say, I'm sorry. I am sorry. It takes a lot of humility to do that. But that's the reason why the Bible teaches us how many times should you forgive your brother or your sister. Remember now, we don't forget the good things people did to us when they wronged us. No. No. Because God never forget. forget. Amen? The, the many things we have done for the Lord, one mistake, two mistakes, it doesn't erase the good things you've done. If God can do that, so must we. But the greatest stumbling block and obstacle for a harmonious relationship is pride. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And therefore, brothers and sisters, we have to deny ourselves because ourselves, the you, the you born from the flesh, the us that was born from Adam, is a person filled with pride. Hallelujah. And that's the reason why in the end time it says, dangerous time shall come. Why? For people shall be lovers of their own selves. Lovers of their own selves is pride. You don't want to die. You still want to be alive in yourself. But how can we be a true follower of the Lord if we keep lifting ourselves up? <laughs> the Lord will continually be displeased. The, the, the more we lift our way up, brothers and sisters, the Lord, He doesn't understand. Praise the Lord, everybody. To deny yourself is to die in yourself. Today, we don't experience what the first century Christians went through when they were being persecuted physically. Now it's more of we want to be at par with people of the world. Are you with me? All of us fall into that, of the, uh, 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 into that trap. We don't want to die. <laughs> it's hard for us to die in ourselves. That's why the Lord said, whoever loves his life will lose life. But whoever will lose his life for my name's sake will find life. What did Paul say? I am crucified with Christ. <sighs> are we crucified with the Lord? Or are we just faking it? Praise the Lord. You still want to be a Christian? This is the basic principle of Christianity. To deny yourself. Let him deny himself. And take up his cross. <laughs> Maraming Kristiyano ayaw ng pagsubok. Gusto niya happy go lucky na buhay. Then are you really following Jesus? Did he not say carry your cross? Huh? Did he not say carry your cross? And then when trial comes, when hardship comes, when difficulty comes, we reject it. We don't want it. It's human nature because we don't want to be uncomfortable. We don't want any discomfort as a human being. But if that is the way God is breaking you and you are resisting, ah, the trials, oh, Lord, I don't like it. Lord, I don't want this hardship. Get it away from me. So how can you be broken? 
How can he break you if you resist it? It's, it's almost like saying, then, I thought you have surrendered yourself to me already. I'd like to reshape you, refashion you, mold you into the image I desire, and you're resisting it. So what am I going to do? Praise the Lord. And you know what's the cross? It's you. You are the cross. Because this very flesh is the stumbling block. This is the cross that we carry. Did not Paul say, who shall deliver me from this body? How wretched man that I am. For in my mind, I serve the law of God, but in my body, the law of sin. Who shall then shall deliver me? Romans chapter 7. Amen. Is this heavy, church? I believe so. Because none of us wants to die. <laughs> Whoever wants to be great, let him be the servant of all. We don't want to be a servant. We all would like to be the boss. Amen. It's good to be the boss. But the more you desire that, the prideful you become. And the Lord is just displeased. He doesn't like that smell. It's offensive to him. He doesn't like it. It doesn't please him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, take up your cross once a year. <laughs> Once a month? No, he said daily. Why daily? Because when you brush your teeth, when you wash your face, the guy that you see in the mirror, that is your enemy. <laughs> Amen. Because that guy doesn't want to die. Praise the Lord. A lesson about humility. Muhammad Ali, after winning the heavyweight bout, flew to New York. And when the plane is about to take off, he failed to put on his seatbelt. But of course, you know that the stewardess, they don't care who you are. Because it is a protocol that everybody needs to put their seatbelt on. And the stewardess checked on him. He was Muhammad Ali. He said, sir, your seatbelt is not on. Muhammad Ali being the proud he is, he said, I am the greatest, he said to the stewardess. Superman doesn't need his buckle on. So what will the stewardess say? That's Muhammad Ali talking. And you know she replied, Well, sir, Superman doesn't need to ride an airplane. Because Superman can fly. <laughs> Buckle up, he, she said. I don't care who you are. Buckle up. Are you with me? <laughs> A lesson of humility, brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. So we have to deny ourselves. Following the Lord daily. We should strive to be humble. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's read in Proverbs 22, verse 4. Brothers and sisters. Proverbs 22, verse 4. Is this good? Okay. Proverbs 22, verse 4. By humility and fear of the Lord are what? Riches 
and honor and life. Wow! Anong sabi dito? By humility. By humility. And the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. A person that is humble is never, never intimidated nor will be insecure. Why? Because he knows his position in Jesus. Nothing that the world does, brothers and sisters, will make him feel insecure. If somebody rises better than him, he doesn't feel threatened. No. Why? I know my place in the body of Christ. Alam ko kung anong bahagi ko sa katawan ni Kristo. But a prideful person, he doesn't want to be overtaken. He's like to be the top honcho. That guy will not last long. Amen? So, humility brings what? Wealth, honor, and life. Because the Lord, if He sees you, that the more He blesses you, the more He promotes you, you still have your feet on the ground. It doesn't get into your head. And the more that God will lift you up. (laughs) Amen. And we have two examples aside from the Lord who when they were promoted, they did not use their position Brothers and sisters, and it did not get into their head. One of them is Joseph. Amen. When Joseph saw his brother, he could have killed them all. Get even with them. These are the guys that mistreated me. Now is my chance. Now I am in the position to crush them to pieces. I'm going to kill them all. They don't even deserve to be my brother. But no. Joseph wants to know, over the years that we have parted, have they, have they, have they changed? Or are, are, are they still the same rascals? <laughs> and Joseph tested them. Amen? And there was a time that Benjamin was with them, and Joseph intentionally put an item in Benjamin's sack, and they were arrested that gave Joseph reason to hold Benjamin and they were devastated. Why? Because they remember their brother Joseph. How it affected their dad. Because their dad, when Joseph was gone, Jacob was like a dead man walking. His joy was, because you know how much he loved Joseph. He made him a coat of many colors. And now, another of the beloved is asked to stay. Huh? And you know what happened? Judah pleaded with Joseph and narrated the story. You know, master, you know, my lord, sire, we have one brother. He died. You know, and it really devastated our father. If you will not allow us to bring Benjamin home, our father will die with a broken heart. Take me instead and let Benjamin go. Oh, that really broke Joseph's heart. Oh, he went back to the room behind the curtain and wept, cried, said, Now mercy triumph over judgment, according to James. He did not allow his authority, brothers and sisters, to be used so he can get even with the brothers because now there is a proof of change. When someone is willing 
to take Benjamin's position in order that Jacob will not be fully crushed in loneliness. And Joseph cannot hold himself long and eventually revealed himself to his brothers. Amen. To forgive is not hard. It is no, 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 no. Sometimes distance and time helps for people to come up to a realization that they are wrong. Amen. You know, circumstances in life, we don't know what's going on on the other end because the Bible were just focusing on Joseph. He's being elevated into the position as the second most powerful man in Egypt. He became the viceroy of Egypt next to the Pharaoh. That is what Genesis focuses on. But on the other end of the spectrum, we don't know what's going on. Only the Bible says there was a famine in the land that compelled the family to seek food elsewhere. And that was instrumental in the reconciliation of the family. Praise the Lord, everybody. Are you with me? Humility. You know what is the danger of pride? Read the book of Esther. There were three main characters there. Esther, Mordecai, and Haman. Haman. Hindi Haman, ha? Haman. Who is he? <laughs> this guy was promoted by the king. But whenever he walks down in the street being carried by the people, there is a guy there whose name is Mordecai who doesn't want to bow down to him. <laughs> huh? He doesn't want to bow down to him and he's too proud of himself. Of all the people that bow down to him and recognize his office, his eyes was glued to this one person who doesn't want to make obeisance to him. And he plotted he schemes something but to make the long story short that made the king issued an edict let all the Jews in the colony be killed because of one man, Mordecai. All right? And he was actually preparing a gallows so he can hang him. That was the plot. Brothers and sisters, he con concocted a plot, conceived an idea to get rid of the man and the Jews. When the news fell into the ear of Mordecai, he went to Esther and said, Esther, can you ask the king to be merciful? And maybe... Maybe God appointed you in such a time as this. Because Esther at the time was the queen. And you know what she said? Tell all the Jews to fast and pray for me. I will go to the king. If I die, I die, she said. Because... If the king did not summon you and you go into his chamber, unless the king reaches out his scepter to you, even if you are the queen, you will die. So what did Esther do? She beautified herself. Put herself in such a beautiful array because desperate time, isn't it? calls for a desperate measure. So he says, if I die, I die. <laughs> Do or die na to, Esther said. So he went, she went to the chamber of the king and the king was surprised because you need to be summoned by the king 
or else you will die. But when the king behold the beauty of Esther, his heart melted. Amen. <laughs> so beautiful. Hadassah. That's the Hebrew name of Esther. Esther is the Persian name. And the king reached out his scepter. Eventually to find out who was behind. The king found out it was that proud, wicked Haman who concocted the idea that Mordecai and the Jews be annihilated. And when the king heard it, he was so furious, brothers and sisters, and the gallows that Haman built for Mordecai was the same gallows he was hanged. Why? Because of pride. Praise the Lord. Can we say amen? amen. Can we give the Lord a big hand of praise? <laughs> Hallelujah. Pride. Kill your pride before pride kills you. So a person that is humble will never be intimidated, will never be insecure because he knows and is comfortable in his position to the Lord. Last but not the least, I'm running out of time. Let's read in James 4. James 4, verse 10. My last verse for this morning. Everybody happy? I hope that you enjoy this. Hallelujah. James 4, verse 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. What is it? What is the meaning of humbling yourself? Last Sunday, I saw a lot of people here at the altar. Dami ko nakitang nagpa-pray dito. I'm going to give you another chance this morning. If you missed coming forward and have not been prayed for, maybe we need to humble ourselves before the Lord. Amen. What is it to be Humbling ourselves before God. It is acknowledging, Lord, I cannot do it without you. I have no power apart from you. Help me, Lord. Total surrender to God. We need to totally surrender ourselves to God. You know, if you have that heart like Jesus, a servant heart, it is a joy to serve. Can I hear an amen? amen. Mas masarap maglingkod kaysa paglingkuran. There is joy in serving. If you have the heart of the Lord. Amen? If you have the heart of Jesus, and you know what? If all of us serves, if all of us function as a body, nothing heavy that can't be done. Amen. Like in the family, if everybody participates, are you with me? Sabi ng pa, ayoko nga. Ayoko milos ng pa. Palaging hinihila yung pa. Pabigat! yung paa. Amen? Imbis na yung paa tumulong because he, to carry the weight of the body, ayaw! Sabi ng kamay, ayaw ko nga! So, paa, kamay, ayaw. Why? Walang servant heart. But James and John would like to sit 
on the right and on the left. <laughs> and they were so bold to say, yes, we can drink of the cup that you drink and be baptized with the baptism you're baptized with. Really? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you are a part of the body of Christ, it's a joy to serve. It's a joy to serve. You serve not because you want to be seen. You serve not because you want applauses. You serve not because you want recognition. That will come eventually. Where and when? When we will be transported into the millennial reign of Christ. But today, our job is to deny ourselves. Our job is keep killing your life. Killing ourselves. Killing your pride, 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 pride. Mamatay ka na pride ka. Because pride will never help you. Pride will ruin you. Pride will separate you from God. Pride will shut God's ears and His eyes not to listen to you. He hates it. Pride will destroy relationships. Pride is a stumbling block for God not to use you. But humility, humility is a character that God is so pleased so the more God lifts you up, the more God prospers you, the more God allows you to climb in the ladder of success. Listen now. Watch yourself. It is, you are more on a dangerous ground. But the only way to overcome and to succeed and to be victorious is keep yourself humble. And you know, if you have that attitude, God is going to lift you more. God, God is, that's my son. That's my child. I like him. I like her. Amen? Because that is what Paul said to the Philippian church. Let this mind be in you. I already explained that last Sunday. Amen, Paul? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And you know, Meron ba tayong pwedeng ipagyabang? <laughs> what, what is it that you have that you... Pwede mong ipagyabang? Wala. Everything came from Him. <laughs> Patalino ka, saan galing yung talino mo? Magaling ka, saan galing ang galing mo? May pera ka, nagtrabaho ka, sino nagbigay sa'yo ng opportunity? Sinong nag-guide sa'yo? Bakit ka nakakawi araw-araw ng walang nangyayari sa iyo? Who protects you? Hello! Amen! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Amen! Who was there when nobody was there? It was Him. Who listens to you when you cry? Who pacifies your troubled feeling? Who gives you peace that passes all understanding? Who sends his angel to guard you 24-7? Your heavenly father. Why? Because you are his property. He purchased you by the blood of his dear son, so why will, he, why will he allow Satan to crush you down and not defend you? God is bound to defend you. And there's only one attitude that he requires. Humility. Whew. Don't be too proud not to clap your hands. Nandito na yung presensya ng Diyos eh. Alam mo kung lahat tayo bibigay, He will move even more. Whoo! Amen! Amen! Don't be too proud. Eh, 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 baka iniisip mo, 
<laughs> Baka mamaya sabihin nung katabi ko pag uwi namin. Ang korni mo kanina, no? Hey, forget about it. Don't be too proud of what people say about you or how you're gonna worship the Lord. Give in, my friend. Nandito ka na! Amen! Mag-full tank ka na! Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. Amen! Pwede mong sabihin mamaya pag alis mo dito, my cup overflows! Running over! Amen! Nandito ka na! Nandito ang presensya ng Panginoon! And He can do wondrous things in our midst right now! If you will allow Him, don't be too proud to raise your hands, to shout. Woo! You know why? He deserves it. <laughs> Pumupunta ka nga dito, isang beses lang sa isang linggo, magtitipid ka pa. Tapos sa basketball, ang lakas mo, Come on, Michael Jordan, shoot the ball! Sa TV ka lang nakaharap. Tapos dito, eh, putulin ng dila mo kaya ng Diyos. Sorry ha. Hey, you know, it's good to shout. Amen. Ang hina! Ang hina! Ang hina niyo! Come on! Don't be too proud to shout! Come on! Come on! Woo! Amen! Hallelujah! 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 Woo! Amen! God is more than able! Woo! Amen! We claim healing in Jesus' name. We claim miracle in Jesus' name. Lahat ng saradong pinto, we claim to be open in Jesus' name. Hallelujah! Amen! Broken relationship healed in Jesus' name. What is impossible to God? Nothing. But you know what He enjoys? The praises of His people. Woo! Amen! Sabi ng Bible, He dwells, He sits on the praises of His people. Lalo na when we worship the Lord in full humility. Woo! Sabi ng Diyos, finally my people have understand. For if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves, turn away from their wicked ways, and seek my face. Hallelujah. Whew. Then I shall hear from heaven. Ang ating panalangin, hindi hanggang kisami lang, Sister Glow. Then I will hear from where? From heaven. I will hear from heaven. And I will heal their land. Humility, John, is what God requires. Kahit na nandiyan na sa'yo lahat, stay humble. Kahit success comes day after day, stay humble. Kahit promotion after promotion comes, blessing after blessing comes, the more you become humble. Because you know you are walking on a dangerous ground. Anytime you can slip away. You say, Lord, let none of these things overwhelm my heart, Lord. But can I be more humble before you, Lord? Help me to be more humble. Help me to be clothed in humility. Help me to acknowledge that it was not I, but it was you, Lord, that have given me the power to have all of these things. That all the glory and honor only belongs to you, my Lord. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, can you feel His presence right now? I believe He is here right now. And dito ang Panginoon sa mga oras na ito. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you failed to come here last Sunday, children, pwede rin sa inyo ito. Akala nyo ba yung mga bata hindi ma-pride yan? Subukan mong kunin yung laruan niya. 
Tignan ko lang. Tama ha? O, oh, kita nyo? Maybe you guys also need some prayers and to be humble. Dahil pag binubuli kayo sa school, baka suntukin nyo na yung nagbubuli sa inyo. That's pride. Amen. If somebody bullies you in school, believe that the Lord will defend you. He will send His angel for you to protect you. Let the musicians come, please. The Lord is already here. I can feel His presence. Amen. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. God is a good God. Amen. Puri ng Panginoon. Puri ng Diyos. Napakasarap damhin ang kanyang banal na presensya. So kung hindi kayo nakapunta dito sa harap last Sunday, maybe now is your chance.